Hi everyone, I'm Aidan, a medical student studying in England, and I make videos on making life a bit more productive and making it more capable on all aspects of life. Would be that studying productivity, life, work, and also things that you can surround yourself with to be able to make it more capable as you can. In this video in particular, I want to actually showcase all of the applications that I use in my iPad, which is my secondary main device that I use for everyday things, be that for studying and for work at the same time. I, my main driver, of course, is my laptop that I use on a daily basis and whenever I'm more on a on the go or if I'm not just near my desk, I tend to use my iPad the second most. I also tend to use it as a secondary display along with my laptop on the desk, but, but this is more so used whenever I'm on the go really. Therefore, considering how much time I actually occupy with the iPad, I wanted to make sure in terms of both the structure, the design and everything in, around it in terms of my usability is as efficient as possible. And I believe I have made it in such a way that maybe I'm able to actually do this. And this is what I want to actually most of showcase exactly how I have structured it, what things I use and how I use it on a day-to-day -day base. For the purposes of this video, it will be divided more so onto one, the structure of the iPad, and second, the apps that I use. Okay, so let's begin with the actual structure itself. As you can see, it looks a bit different to a normal iPad in the sense that all of the applications and the design itself is quite different than the stock iPad that you can get. I'm mainly able to do this because of iPad OS and its 14 version upwards, which allows a lot more customizability, along with widgets, colors, and things of the sort. And because of that update, I was able to utilize it to make it to my benefit, according to what my tastes are and everything of the sort. So starting off with, as you can see, I have made it into more of a black and white theme because I'm that's the type of colors that I like to go with, both making it a bit minimal at the same time as making sure that everything is still there while making it more so aesthetically pleasing for myself. Now, in terms of the structure itself, I have divided it into three separate categories. The actual home page, the first screen that you see, the secondary page on the second screen, and of course, all of the applications that you can see on the dock at the end. Let's start off with the first home screen that you immediately will get into once I unlock the iPad. The first thing that comes into my mind are the four widgets that immediately are there. First off, the calendar one, the clock, the quote, and of course, Google Calendar as well. In terms of the ones that are complete black and white, they are the widgets that I've created based on the color scheme I wanted to go with. There is a separate application that you use, which is called Widget Smith, and that allows more customizability with an extra widget that you can include, such as the calendar, as you can see, the clock, and also the quote. I don't know, I did like the overall minimalism of it and how it just gives me the information straight away, so that's one of the reasons why I went with the calendar and both the clock at the same time. If anyone's interested about the quote, that's from Frederick Nietzsche. He was a German philosopher, and, and yeah, I did have read a couple of his books and do like a few of his quotes that he used, so I integrated that into my home screen at the same time. Underneath the clock and the quote widget, you can see the Google integration of the widget that they provide, stock widget that they provide themselves, and I tend to use Google Calendars as my main calendar to populate everything that's it most so populate all of the events that are happening to keep me up to date with my scheduling. I would have preferred a bit more customizability in terms of the colors and everything of the sort, but it does add a bit more of a splash of color, so which is appreciated at the same time. Though, so, yeah. It keeps me actually going exactly what things are out there and what things I need to actually more so do. So that, that's actually nice along with the overall monthly calendar that's besides it. Now you must be wondering how I was able to even create these black and white icons for the applications themselves. It's mainly a combination of using my own design work at the same time as using the shortcuts app from Apple that you can easily download on the Play Store. You can use the same process on your iPhones as well. So if you want to actually create something similar, not necessarily the same aesthetics of myself, but more so a bit more customizability, then yeah, you can easily follow these steps that I'm about to show you. The main idea is that you can create shortcuts with all of the applications that you have and make it a bit more customizable. For the design itself, I use a web application called Figma. Figma is something that I use for all of my design work, and it's so good that for any design that I need to do, whether that be for even med school work or even outside of it, I use Figma. Say, for example, for any presentations and PowerPoints that I need to give, I create the PowerPoints themselves on Figma at the same time. 
and that allows me a bit more flexibility to make it a bit more colorful or a bit more aesthetic to make sure that in terms of the design itself it's at least eye pleasing so yeah this is exactly what i did so i went through all of the right dimensions that are needed for the application icons especially more for an ipad to make it look as much apple like as possible then i made a whole list of all of the applications that i use on my ipad and started to create my own designs in terms of in terms of making sure that the background is black and the actual icon itself appears white on some of them as you can see especially on teams t is that i use my own custom font it's called someone and i i, I quite like these brush strokes that it actually gives so i utilize that and instead of using the stock fonts for the letters i used that and made it a bit more personal to myself after getting the groundworks running i created all of the different apps that i used into one folder after exporting it and then downloading it onto my iPad. So it's on files. And what that allowed me to do is once I click on shortcuts is I can easily click on this plus icon and say, um, I don't know, this would be, let's say, a Notion app application that I'm opening. But if I press on this um, button that I'm now creating, it will open this application. I can click on the app and see which application I want to open. And because I've labeled it as Notion, I'm just going to search up Notion here. And this is where the interesting thing happens. I can now create this button and export it onto my home page that you can see here. And this is the crucial bit. What happens is I can click on it and say, choose file. Of course, since I downloaded all my graphics pack onto my files, it's on, it's going to be on files. And now I'm going to search up Notion. The good thing is that when I was exporting it, I also labeled all of my individual file types as the relevant application. So I can easily just search up. I can now easily click on it. What tends to happen is it will automatically open up the Notion as what you would normally do anyways. And I have created a whole range of these similar designs for all of the applications. So let me know if you do like these type of things and I can actually make that public eventually once every Everything gets finalized. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you do like this and I will provide a link on it somewhere in my link tree bio. With the whole structure and in terms of how I created the application done, let's talk about the actual applications I use on a day-to-day -day basis. With the home screen, I wanted to put in all of the apps that I can access more easily and more readily and they are more readily available to me. So that once I actually open it up, unlock the screen, they are usually there. With regards to this, of course, as you can see, I have my main three Google apps, the Google Chrome, my main search engine, which I have been more so using ever since I started to use um, search engines. Next up is the Google Podcasts that I use. That's my main driver for listening to any podcasts and things of the sorts that are more audio related. And this allows me to actually continue to watch all the podcasts and am able to actually stay on tune with any of the latest uh, episodes that come up and so the next one is Google Drive that's my main cloud storage that I use and everything since Google everything I felt that it's best to actually use that and utilize it so everything is to sync into my Google account up next are usually the applications I use for university so, so these are the complete anatomy app bookshelf lens blackboard outlook and osmosis along with notability in regards to complete anatomy app this is the best application that you can use when it comes to basically learning anatomy in any degree that you are doing next up is bookshelf our uh, clinical key it's from Elsevier and they have created a whole application to for us to be able to read any of the EPUB format books so any of my pre-reading that needs to be done with protocols to books or any of the recommended next up is my Microsoft lens is absolutely great when it comes to scanning any sort of document or piece of information what it does is that what's when someone is asking you to actually be able to scan a copy of something majority of the times the background that you put the document on um, it's also present at the same time there and what it does is that as you can see there's different formats that you can see whether you want to scan a business card, whether it's a photo, whether it's a document and even a whiteboard. It has a built-in system where it will recognize all of the borders around it once you put it onto the screen. And once it recognizes it, automatically creates a border. Next up is Blackboard. Blackboard is, I think, they have the monopoly for make, creating a system for all of the universities to use and put in their lectures their learning material and for students to access it. So this is where I usually tend to use all of my hard drive. So it tends to actually ask me to actually log in every now and then. But yeah, this is where I use for majority of the learning that I need to do. Outlook is the main communication device that I use when it comes to communicating with any of the lecture staff or basically anyone in the university. Now I started using Notabase. I will always wanted Notability really, but 
ever since they made it free, that's when I immediately started using it a lot more, in, coupled with osmosis. Osmosis is really good when it comes to uh, getting the information down in the more visual sense. If you're more of a visual learner, it has great videos and short clips that you can actually utilize. Google Books. I used to use Kindle before, but I realized that Google Books is a lot better for me in both. Uh, uh, since I use a predominantly Google account, everything just syncs up perfectly. And next up is Teams. Teams is the second main communication we use in the university, either that be for video calls, voice calls even and even for messaging. Next, move, let's move on to all of the applications that are on the top. I placed all of the applications here that you need to use the most, even more so than the applications on the home screen, the, mainly because these are the applications that I use every chance I get whenever. Apart from the stock applications like the photos, album and the settings, the main one is Notion. Notion is practically my second brain. I use everything for Notion. I am again planning to do a separate video where I showcase how I use Notion. I have created a whole different dashboard with it. So I'm also excited to show you exactly how I actually created it and how I utilize Notion. Pellpad is a bit more for clinical work, especially for reflective entries, filling in and uploading certificates for competency, especially uh, basic life support, let's say, and mandatory trainings that we have to do on a, day, on a yearly basis. Next up is uh, Simple Notes. Simple Notes is essentially my uh, note taking app where I have to actually jot down a quick note, a quick thing that I need to, for example, write and do something, for, let's say. And the good thing is that it's not, not only is it minimal, but it also allows me to also search up any of the notes that I have made in the past. As you can see that since I use mainly Google accounts, Gmail was the obvious go-to for any of my personal emails that I have to do, especially whether that be for YouTube or any of my own personal work emails at the same time. Now finally onto the apps that are on my second screen. These are the apps that don't necessarily contribute to studying up productivity more so, but they are there more so to you. Any of the downtime that I need to do or anything else that doesn't revolve studying really. Put it on the second screen is mainly so that I can actually do some extra work for me to actually get to it rather than being on the home screen. Okay, let's move on to the applications that I use on this. Financial Times is the first one. I'm able to get the free digital access to Financial Times. I also have it downloaded on my phone as well for any of the updates that are coming in terms of the news, especially both uh, in the current affairs along with or how it's going to affect the economies as well. Next up is Zoom. Zoom is more so for the video conferences or webinars that uh, either I have to do or um, I have to join on a, on a more personal basis, whether that be for medical school related or for anything that are happening either from society, uh, either from different societies or things of the sort. So the thing is I downloaded WhatsApp onto my iPad, mainly because I use WhatsApp as, to, as one of my main messages on a day-to-day -day basis. And the reason for downloading it is mainly because my typing speed is a lot faster than my touch typing speed. So I wanted to make benefit of that by actually being able to see messages and being able to also respond more efficiently at the same time. Next up is YouTube, along with Netflix as well, is what I tend to use either both for productivity or studying. Really for studying because I tend to rely more on osmosis or even the pre-recordings from my university on the lectures that we have to do. But on some rare occasions, if I wanted a further explanation of it or another way of explaining it, then I tend to use YouTube. But apart from that, I use it more for a downtime, for watching any videos or either by laying on the bed or, you know, just being able to relax with this along. A time I wrote is something that I'm using. I like the minimal interface that it does. It has is more of a tracker as well that allows me to track certain things that I want to do and how I can actually utilize this. I am still trialing it out to see how exactly it can go. So yeah, I'll, if I do like it, I'll make a separate video about it. But next up is Spotify. I tend to use usually instrumental music along with this. So whenever I'm studying or whenever I can to actually get me into the zone of just focusing on studying and being being able to do these types of things. I am thinking of making my own playlist of just study where it's going to be a mixture of both instrumental and lo-fi beats to actually utilize it and and these type of tracks that is something that I would actually listen to when I'm studying so yeah. Um, some more of plans there. Same reason with Instagram as well. If I most use social media, if I'm not counting WhatsApp really. And same reason as to why I've downloaded it on, onto my uh, iPad is really because I'm able to actually interact and in with you guys, more specifically using my uh, keyboard a lot faster at the same time. So this is, was more for my iPad tool in terms of how I structured my iPad for best productivity along with all of the applications that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, this isn't the end all and be all. I'm always rewarding around and trying to see new things. If you did like these type of videos, drop a like down below and I'll be able to gauge exactly how you guys think about these type of videos where I'm also showcasing the technology I use and how I use it to make it a bit as 
productive as possible. However, yeah, I'm also also interested in how you use and set up your phones or any of your secondary device if you have an iPad or if you use a Windows Surface or any tablet that you use. But yeah, why don't you um why don't you share that with me and I'll be more so interested to use all the applications that you use. But yeah, but otherwise, until but otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.